How many feel the joy of the Lord? You should feel better since you laid some burdens down. You should feel a whole lot better. Hallelujah. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. Give honor to my own husband on tonight, Elder Q, who sits where he wants to sit. So glad to have Apostle with us in the house. Ain't no stranger. That's your brother. I'm going to ask everybody they can move down here. I'm going to try to... I'm going to try to teach some things tonight that I maybe just, just go with the flow tonight because um, it's just been things that's on my heart and on my mind, and I want to do my best to try to release it. This is no way like a one-night message. It's just trying to help us understand where we are, and when I tell you, I genuinely feel the reboot in the Holy Ghost. It's about 10 of us rebooted because about 10 is all we need. And we can turn this city upside down. And I'm really telling you the truth. Feel the reboot in the Holy Ghost. It's funny, my mom, the other day, her phone wasn't working over the weekend. And she kept trying to get it to work, trying to get it to work. So finally I said, came on, kept saying, Mom, your phone working? No, and for those of you who don't know my mom, that is a catastrophe for her not to have her phone. Anywho, so I came on, I said, Mom, <clears throat> I said, Mom, is your phone working? Well, I called them and they told me, what? that I got to reboot the whole thing. And they said something, it was too congested, she said, so she started the process. And of course, I'm fiddle-faddling around, but I want to know what the process is. So she said, well, first alerts told her, you're going to lose everything. Because, I guess, whatever, her program's layered up. I don't even know what happened with my mother's phone, but it was too bombarded with whatever the layers, because she don't have, my mom doesn't get the latest iPhone or whatever, so the truth is, it's probably just old. <laughs> it said you're going to lose all data all phone numbers and all everything she said she tells me she said well it's telling me I'm going to lose everything I said well you're going to either lose everything or just not have a phone which one you want and she said well I know y'all number my kids number and that's all that's really important so I'll lose everything and of course everything about reboot and reset for me at these days got a revelation <laughs> And I think many times because God is our cookie file. He knows our cookie file. He's our motherboard, and he's the programmer. I do believe that to get true reboot, you got to get challenged. Are you willing to lose everything? Because that's the only way this is going to work from here. you got to be willing to lose everything. And then you've got to calculate what's important, who's important. And as I say it over and over, as we talk about relationship and things, we're not talking about relationships like it's negative, like people are negative. We're talking about relationships, meaning just because this relationship very well may be where I am now. And people may be where you are now. And if we stay with scripture being 30, 60, and 100 fold, that may have been where you started. But it is not the essence of where God is taking you. And you'll never know until you take your own cap off of your own mind of where God can take you and what God can do in your life. So I want to try to stay right there with moving to perfection. And I want to try to layer this thing. And I, and I really, really, really want to take my time. And, I, and I, like, I can't even pull up enough scriptures to back what I'm watching um, and seeing as much as I, I, I'll try to get pertinent and, and important scriptures but I do need you to do your own research, and I need you to do your own. I need you to get in the wind with the Holy Spirit, and I need you to trust what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life. Church, what I have rebooted to personally as a pastor is I understand I have been called by him, hired by him to love and care for his people. And by the grace of God, I'm going to give it 110% to fulfill what the Father have asked me to do because I've got to give account to him for how I cared for the assignment he's given me. But again, we all have an assignment. And so you've got to know your assignment and you've got to adhere to it and surrender to it just as I am. Hence, as follow me as I follow Christ. And if I have stepped this thing, then you're going to have a half step in church. But if I'm trying to give my all, follow me as I follow Christ, because that means we're operating under the same mantle. Hallelujah. And so I don't want this to be a house that the pastor said. I want this to be a house that my pastor taught, and I searched the word, and the Holy Ghost showed me. I want us to be a people that love the word, 
love the word, can't wait, get an appetite for the word, and then do your own searching and praying over that word so that the Holy Spirit can reveal himself to you. I don't even know what to say. Like, it's a personal thing, and I don't, I, I'm just, just let me keep working all the time. Our children, like, I don't know if it's because of my share of losing people in my family, and I realized what that was like, and the, and the absence of that, and the feeling inadequate, and looking for barriers, but what is definitely done subliminally, and not even consciously, is that I'm constantly thinking, will our kids be okay if I die tomorrow? Isn't that a horrible thought? Don't judge me, but I do think that way. Like, will they be okay at this stage in their life? Can they survive? What would they know? I don't expect them to act like they're 30 when they're 13, but the ones that are 25, I want them to be mature enough. 21, 25, 13, 14. So there's a constant in my heart, and I told my husband, I don't even like to talk that way, because but that is how my brain is wired now. Can they survive, or how much survival will they have on their own church? I, I, want, I want to say that to you because you've got to understand how much more intimate that is to me for you in the spirit. I watched it happen. And I watch it happen throughout the earth. Not just in my circle of fellowship of pastors. That when our founders and people started dying, people lost it. And they ain't walking with God today. They're confused. They're their false doctrine, they're backslidden because their confidence was too much in that leader. You're supposed to miss me, but according to scripture, you're going to see me again. If you, hallelujah, follow on. I don't want, and I mean this church, I'm talking so real tonight. By the grace of God, again, every ounce he asked me and tell me prayer to me, that's why prayer is not like, I don't even know what to say. It's not a, it's not a, oh, we coming to prayer. It's like, no, this ain't no joke. It's my desire to open up a corridor that my spiritual children in the gospel know how to tap into God by themselves. They don't need me to help them tap into God. I may have a deeper corridor, but you better know how to access. I'm glad I got this. These two sections are really, thank you. So I know that what helped my survival when all of our founders, and this is going to make sense as I'm going to go into this message, was because they laid such a great foundation. There was a time the Holy Spirit said, you better can all you get. Not knowing what it was going to be, but he quickened my spirit and said, you better can everything you get. Relish every impartation, hear the word, listen closely. And I remember when my spirit didn't take things for granted. I didn't take messages for granted. I didn't take impartations for granted. When I would get impartations, I, like I said, I would do my days of consecration. I had a journal. I didn't tell everybody my spiritual business because people will confuse you. They'll challenge what you saw, challenge what you heard. So let me just write this down because, God, if it be you, I need you to give me scripture to back it. Teach me you. So what we are talking about when it comes to rebooting, and the reason why I'm saying all of this is because the charge on my life is to teach the house everywhere, the body at large. Because trust me, church, my accountability is not to 64, 89 people that show up only. And I know that. And I'm conscious of that. This is a part, but it's, it's much bigger and broader than even I know. So I'm accountable to say, all right, Jesus is coming. And we got to be hot. <laughs> we got to be on fire. And he's hired all of us to do something great in the earth. And the only way it can be done is through his route of purification and perfection. Claps dwindle down. It's okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. But church is because it's the only thing that's going to last. Every man's work. Pull your spirits in. Pull your minds in. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Don't worry about people who look like could be prospering faster than you, growing faster than you. Don't worry about people that might, you might have friends in other churches, and they'll tell you all the amazing things they're doing in the church, and they'll kind of judge you and say, what are you doing? Don't be moved by none of that. None of that. Because every man's work will be tried. And it will be tried by fire to see what kind of work 
it is. Every man's work will be tried. So you don't want to compare yourself to nobody. You just want to make sure I'm hearing God, obeying God, and committed to my work that God has given me. Because that is the only work you're held accountable for. And so again, when I say, get your mind out of social media, everybody, I'll send somebody, there's so many people I'm, I'm unfollowing, it ain't even funny. Because just your world is just too much compared to what I'm doing. So your world could be off the chain. And if mine is right here, ain't no comparison. Let me just deal with my link <laughs> while you can have chains. Y'all get what I'm saying? But my link is my course, and my link is going to lead to a chain as long as I stay committed and build my chain right. So let's go back to, let's go to the word, move, uh, moving to effect. So let's, let's pick it up from last Sunday or Sunday, but I, I, I wanted to show the contemporary version of Hebrews 6 and 4 when it talk about where for leaving the principle, and they put it this way. The contemporary version said, we must try to become mature and stop thinking about more, and stop thinking and start thinking about more than just the basic things we were taught about Christ. We shouldn't need to keep talking about why we ought to turn from deeds that bring death <laughs> and why we ought to have faith in God. Wow, how simple is that? So simple. So let's go there again because this is where we're going to perfection. We must try to become more mature. And stop thinking about, start, sorry, start thinking about more than just the basic things we were taught about Christ. We shouldn't need to keep talking about why we ought to turn from deeds that bring death. Why is that a conversation? Because if you keep talking about it, that's all it's going to bring. If you're constantly talking about, because the only thing that sin can bring is death. There's no life. There's no progress. There's no joy. Nothing comes out of conversations about my past and about my struggle and about the enemy got me. And about my temptations. Now, don't get it wrong. I know that we are all growing on different levels. But I challenge even the baby saints to say, if you can skip some of these years of talking about your negativity and immediately leap your faith into thanking God for what he's done, you're going you're gonna to kill a whole lot of unnecessary time. Listen, I'm so out here in my mind in believing God that I truly believe in my mind that if I leap with God that all things are passed away and everything have become new, that I can act like I'm crazy, that when you bring up my past, it would be who? When? What? Huh? What? That's crazy. Because that person don't exist. If the word told me that I take your sins and I put them in the sea of forgiveness, is if it never happened the whole church should be on fire and he's saying come with me so he's saying leave these basic why are you constantly having it and I, and I mean I pray social media different one this needs to go global to the body of Christ why is that always a conversation about our struggle and the devil? I'm tired of him being in my conversation. I want to talk about the glory and the goodness of God and the compassion of God. Oh, I'm so thankful I see another day of mercy. God, what do you have a sign for me today? Thank you, Lord, for keeping the enemy up under my feet and handling my enemy. Thank you, Father. He says, so we shouldn't keep talking about why we ought to turn from deeds that bring death and why we ought to have faith in God. You know we got to have faith in God. For without faith, it is. Talk back to me. Without faith, it is. Talk back to me. Without faith, it is. You can't do nothing without faith. You can't because it's not your work. It's his. And everything, Lord, help me tonight, and everything that God challenges us to be and do as believers, it is going to be beyond you. It is going to be out of your scope. 
It is going to be out of your ability. If it's within your ability, if it's within your scope, then you do not need God. But God will ask you and challenge you to do some things out of your norm, out of your comfort, out of your environment, out of your ethnicity, out of your budget, uh uh-oh, out of everything. And he said, guess what it's going to take? Faith. Because faith has to always get the glory and not you. I need some praise to say, I'm ready, I'm ready. Let me get a reboot in my mind. Let me get a reboot. So yes, we could be possibly performing, living, acting, everything under our ability because we keep going back to our carnal mind. So here we go. Let's talk about this thing. Next scripture. So let's talk about this integrity because I want to try to, I'm going to try to show you. I'm going to try my best to show you. So here's what I keep seeing is what he's saying is it's time to build. If we're getting a reboot, then that means the platform is now clear. Are you with me? Okay, so that means whatever you need to do to forgive you, forgive you, and let's move on. Whatever you need, I, 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 need, I, need, I need to go here. Some people, I got to go here. I got to go here. I got to go here. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> Saints, we're going to have to reset relationships. And what I mean is, do not let this year, consecration, tonight, pass without resetting relationships with one another. Don't, because t- if I be a woman of God standing up here with a red marker, you're going to crash. It's not going to build. It's not, because he can't build off of hypocrisy and deceit and hate and division. A house divided against itself. Talk back to me, a house divided work and you're gonna have to swallow your pride puke up your pride how about that (laughs) swallow your pride no don't swallow it's gonna go back puke it up (laughs) you have to puke up your pride and humble yourself because what I'm after is greater than this minute thing church come on come on thank you sister 10 again hey you are holding true to your name um so if I'm resetting I got to reset relationships. Platforms are clear now. Platforms are clear. And let's not do the hypocritical clear like we're just going to assume everything is okay. Die, I got to tell you, I'm sorry. So it's clear, die, so that two months from now, Satan don't bring that issue back. You can tell him, no, she cleared herself. She said she was sorry. You got to clear it, church. We have to. We cannot move in unity. Now, what I know by reality, by scripture, and by history, only a remnant is going to do it. That's what I know by scripture. That's what I know by statistics. And that's what I know biblically. Only a remnant. But again, as a pastor, I'm telling everybody, here's how we're going to build, y'all. You got to clear the path. Reboot it. Get your ground cleared. It could be ex-relationships, ex-boyfriends. You said crazy stuff. Don't call him a thing. He tried to get you back. You know what I'm saying. My point is, should I make up with him? No, not like that. My point is, you know what you need to do that keeps that platform always clogged. Now, what we're building is you. You're building you. And as fundamental, as I say all the time, as fundamental, fundamental as many of this can be it still is a reality of what we're not doing and we can no longer be hearers of the word only hallelujah Hallelujah. which gets us nowhere so we don't make progress in the body of Christ not because God isn't true it's because we haven't been committed and loyal and obedient I asked a question today to somebody and I said what is more critical unbelief or disobedience how many think unbelief? It's okay, raise your hand. How many think unbelief? How many think disobedience? The most critical thing is unbelief. And unbelief is the most critical because disobedience says, I just didn't do it. So I just didn't do it. The children of Israel, and, I, and, and, and Apostle, maybe you or Deb can bring up the scripture for me. When... God was dealing with Moses with the children of Israel. His irritation at the most was not their idol gods. 
It was not their idolatry. It was their unbelief that I can take you all the way to the end. Your flesh is going to make, make, make mistakes. Your flesh is going to rebel. The problem is if I make a mistake, here we go, and if I don't even believe God can heal me or help me, I'm never going to go to him. I'm going to stay in the mistake. Y'all not hearing me. And I'm subject to vanity. I'm subject because there's no good thing that dwelleth in my flesh. But if I stay believing in the word, I'm bringing all of this to God every time to bring me out. I need some praise because we got to build. Without, without, then it is impossible. So if I don't even believe I need faith, believe God can help me, believe God can bring me out, you're going to stay in your rut. But if I believe the word, if I trust the word, I don't care how many times I got to come back. I know I'm going to get it right because his word is true and his word faileth not. I fail, but his word is guaranteed. He speaks it and it's going to come. I stand on his word. Shout hallelujah. So I've got to believe in his word to know how to build. Because it's not what we become in God. And I told you I'm challenged. I'm challenged because I'm trying to find an English vernacular. I'm trying to break it down as he's talking to me. If I don't believe his word, then I can't even build. But if I believe it, then I'm going to obey it. Because I believe it. You're here tonight because you believe prayer is necessary for your walk. If you didn't believe it, you wouldn't be here. You're committed to the things of God because you believe there's a reward of those that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. If you didn't believe it, you wouldn't be here. And so because you believe it, you have made your flesh come into subjection. And obey because of what you believe. Y'all talk back to me. Come on, let's go, let's go. So he's saying, lay this foundation. So what we're doing is I've almost acted in myself as though, not like I'm brand new saved, but almost like now, Father, like I keep saying, my quote has been now that I know what I know. Now that I know that in the midst of my wrong, you still bless me. Ooh, let me get this thing right and do it right because I can only imagine. I can only imagine. <laughs> So I want to talk about something that is called integrity, which we hear about because church, everything, my first building block is faith. That is our first building block. That is the foundation of everything we do. And we do it by the word. We are searching the word because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you take the word that applies to you. You take the word that quickens in your mind and you search it and you get your own understanding and you let God unravel your own life because you're building your own foundation. Here we go. Well, integrity. Integrity is that thing called honesty. Now, the reason why integrity is a must is because when we talk about the word with the three hearts, and, and Jesus is given the parable about the stony heart and about the heart uh, uh, um, uh, that the cares of this world have plucked it out. The, the heart that brings forth fruit was the honest heart. And what I'm beginning to appreciate more about integrity is integrity doesn't say I'm always right. Integrity says I can admit when I was wrong. Integrity says I can own. Because church, again, our perfection is not God's perfection. See? And so we think our perfection is I make no mistakes. No, I'm in the flesh. So the word will contradict itself. It can't contradict itself. It said I'm in the flesh. But then how do I own it? Do I admit it? And so the scripture says whoever walks in integrity or honesty or uprightness walks securely. I can walk securely because there's nowhere to go when you've gotten the truth. And we've got to build where God has taken us. You've got to build it on an honest heart. And that first honesty is with you. And you can't deny things God is, God is showing you. And you can't ignore when God rebukes you. And you can't plead the blood of Jesus over your sins. You've got to confess them and turn. 
And that's the only way that growth was starting. And again, this is so fundamental, but we don't do it. And so then we want the, and it's okay, because we all grow at different levels, but we got to lay this so we at least get a goal. <laughs> yeah, you know, when you're working out, you know, you may not be 36, 24, 36 yet, but it's nice to have a goal. <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. So I need a goal. I need a goal. Where, God, where are you taking me? I need a goal so I can stay focused. I need a goal so I can stay hot. And so integrity, he said, now whoever walks in integrity, you walk safely, church. You walk safely. Because I'm, I'm telling you the truth. Because I'm striving to live the truth. So you can't just come. Y'all, are y'all, I need you to understand. So Satan can't just come up in my world. I'm walking in truth. He can come up in my world if I'm walking in a lie. He got some on me. But if I'm walking in truth, truth with myself, truth with God, truth with whomever else that I need to offend or I have offended, ain't nowhere you can go, Satan. Where you going to go? I handle my own business. That's part of that maturity. It's handling my life. Ain't nobody responsible for you but you. Nobody's responsible for your deeds but you. Nobody's responsible for sins that we do but you. I got to own it. I got to own when I displease the Father. I cannot pray over it. I got to own it first. I got to admit it. I got to make it right. This is all fundamental. But church, I promise you, we got to reboot and lay this thing again. I refuse, by the grace of God, I refuse to raise a child of hypocrisy. We will not be a church that is faking deliverance and faking praise and faking the glory. I want his real glory. I want his real honor and presence. He said, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found. So if you're trying to do it another way, I'm, again, I say you've given the devil power. He does not have power over you. You are washed by the blood. We was watching some crazy movie not too long ago, my husband and I, and it was like this whole thing, this guy was delusional, it was just a whole bunch of crazy stuff, and this over, and I said, I said, you know, these things are true when there's no blood of the lamb over your life. When there's no blood of the lamb over your life, no profession, profession of Jesus Christ over your life, that's where you have access, the devil got access to you. Well, as a child, when I know to do right and don't do right, and I step out of his grace, stop making everything about the devil. Admit, I got out of his will. I got out of his will. This affliction, this attack, this torment, this temptation, this trap, it never would have happened if I would have stayed in his will. So the scripture says, but whoever takes crooked paths, when you try to find another way outside of his way, he said, you're going to be found out. You, this, you, you're going to, because God, everything done in darkness does what? Talk back to me. Everything done in darkness, what does it do? Yeah, every man thinketh he's right in his own eyes, but his neighbor will come and find him out. You're never going to get away with nothing, nothing. How about this? You don't get away with nothing with God or without God. Folk don't get away. Oh, sidebar, 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 sidebar. I, I, I truly believe, in, and I just won't allow myself to breathe, like, because it's like, it's like, whoa, hey, hold on a minute. I truly believe, sweetheart, I, I, I truly believe that because scripture is true, that the world, and because God is in charge of everything, many of the world's inventions and things that they do is directly and intentional with God so that his word will be true. For example, everything done in darkness shall be brought to the light. Like all of a sudden, cameras are everywhere. Like, like street cameras, everything. It's like people are getting busted and stuff. That before, and I believe it's gonna, do y'all understand what I'm saying? But it happened by a witty invention. Like cell phones, like cameras. They have the, um, the army, have those military glasses that you can see in the dark. Are y'all working with me? I truly believe that witty invention will match the word of God, which makes the word of God be true. He didn't say how it was going to happen, but he said it was going to happen. <laughs> Everything done in the darkness is going to come to the light. He said, but whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. But if I walk in my integrity, I'm safe. I don't have to worry about you finding out anything about me because I'm walking in honesty. I don't have to worry about you trapping me. I'm walking. This ain't an arrogant thing. I've made my thing right with God. And if you bring it to me, there's no shame because I made it right with God. And God will be my judge. Hallelujah. God will be my shield. God will be my buckler. And God will fight for me because I made it right with God. 
And if God tells me there's something accountable for it, I got to do it. And I will do it because I know it ain't going to end this way. Come on, y'all. It ain't going to end this way because his word would not be true. Here we go. Next scripture or next slide. So here it goes. So the integrity of the upright guides them. So when you're walking upright, your integrity becomes your guide. What does that mean, Pastor Bennett? It means when I'm faced with situations, you're asking what is the right thing to do. How are we building this foundation? We're building it by faith. And faith only happens by the more of the word of God that I hear. And what is faith? And how do I layer my faith? I layer it with an honest heart, with a heart of integrity. So the integrity of the upright guides them, but the unfaithful are destroyed by their duplicity. The unfaithful are destroyed by the things that they're already doing. Here we go. Watch this slide. The commentary said this, the perverseness of transgressors, the Elliot commentary said the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Fraudulent persons, literally those who cover a matter, pervert the truth, thereby ruining their own characters in as much as in time they can hardly distinguish right from wrong and losing the favor of the almighty God. So when you are constantly trying to find another way, I'm telling you what I've witnessed you can be in such deceit in your heart and in your mind and so determined to find another way other than God's way that after a while, you almost can't even do the truth because you're always looking for another way. And he said, after a while, he said, you, you, you're confusing the truth. Instead of coming clean <laughs> and come honest, this is going to take a minute to lay these foundations I want to stay here for a minute because part of these building blocks, part of these building blocks is to take you to your works. And your works are directly connected to your faith and your integrity. And the ability to do great works that will last is based on your faith and your integrity. And what's happening in the body of Christ is everybody's high about works. Everybody. We're high about doing things for the Lord, but it don't last if it wasn't done by his faith and integrity. And so this is where you see ministries crash. Because somewhere they stop walking in integrity. Because you know what you have to war in between this growth? In between these stages, you're always going to war with pride. Always. And let me tell you about pride. Is the more you accomplish, the more pride going to get in the way. The greater your gift becomes, the more notoriety you get, the more prosperity you get. Pride keeps getting in the way. So you, this is why he said, you've got to humble yourself. You've got to bring yourself back every time. This is what you're doing. You reboot yourself every time. And every time you reboot yourself to the process of God, every time you do that, it gives him the joy to reboot you and spring you farther. Because the Father is looking for honorable vessels. The Father is looking for true vessels. He's looking for the vessels that understand that your life really isn't your own. And so let's go to the, let's go to the next slide. So integrity is a sound, unimpaired, or perfect condition. It's honesty. It's uprightness. It's a sound decision. Wherefore, Leaving the principles of the doctrine, and leaving the principle, leaving all these dead works, we're maturing. And I mean this, when I say to our believers, and you may have just recently given your heart to Christ, seniority has nothing to do with it. It's how fast can you believe him? How fast can you believe him to obey? How fast can you believe him to commit? Because the sooner you do that, 
then you start already your route to prosperity, your route to your blessings. So I, I want to take questions because I, I, I want this to be a dialogue and I want us to grow and I want us to feel it and I want us to comprehend it and I'm not in a hurry. And I mean that I, if Jesus were to come tonight, I'm going to get a full reward because he knew what I was trying to finish. <laughs> that, and, and honestly, I, I do think that's how it works. When the scripture says, I want to find you working, I truly believe he knew if you had more time, you'll finish it, but I needed you to come home. I, I, that's Again, I got my own stuff. So I want to open it up a little bit for dialogue, and I want to open it up for questions. Um, but we want to stay in the realm of integrity. We want to talk about building. We want to talk about faith. We want to talk about um, um, even if you want to give a few testimonies tonight, but I just want it to be a dialogue because I want those that are here to that maybe are new to Christ. I want to hear some more mature saints, but we are building again. And we are laying a sure foundation, and that foundation is starting with our faith in God. There's been a lot of messages out today. Deb and I was exchanging some, some different stuff about, you know, faith. And I told her, I said, Deborah, that is what God is wanting his people to grab. He wants us to grab his faith because, again, 2020, it's going to be on. Uh, I won't tell, it's, it's, a, it's some friends of ours, they called me the other day. And they said they were supposed to come out this year, and they said, Pastor Bennett, we're not going to be able to make it, but they said some supernatural stuff. They got like this major property with these school attached and houses attached that was going for over a million something dollars. They got it for $300,000. They said it's a whole program. And I said, I said, because it's on. It's on. It's what God is doing. And God is saying, I'm about to make my children this remnant because the world and the earth needs righteousness. The earth needs goodness. The earth needs peace. And only the saints can do that. Y'all, come on. Only the saints. So I want to open it up. If there's any questions, I want to open it up. If there's any uh, comments, I want to open it up. If there's any testimonies, um, I just want to open it up for just a minute. If you have anything, you can raise your hand. Or, yeah. Yes. Stand, please, Sister Brandy. Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. I have a small testimony about integrity. I was a student um, maybe seven, eight years ago, and I had a large amount of student loans. And so at one point, I just couldn't pay them. But then as God started changing things in my life, I made up my mind that I was going to pay them because there were a lot of different programs out where you could get loan forgiveness. But I said, well, I made the loans, and so I'm going to try. And the Lord said, yes, you are. You're not going to do that. You're going to pay the loans because you told those people when they gave you the money, you would pay them back. So I said, okay, Lord. So fast forward this year, I'm in a situation now where I could start making payments. So I called to set up to make payments on the loans. And when I called them, they said, oh, you don't have to. We've done an application for your loans to be forgiven. Wow. So I said, okay. Wow. But it gets better. Wait, 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 wait. It gets better. So I, I went on, and they said, all you have to do is sign the paper. So I did. And Immediately. <laughs> within 21 days, they forgave $52,000 of student loans because I said yes. great see faith just got to increase faith just got to increase yes blessings okay so you all say your name we already know and see you every sunday so you might say what <laughs> she don't i don't want nobody to see me what? um i don't know if this is a dumb question or not i don't know if you actually said it but how do you um and i'm new to this oh Oh, I'm new to... So introduce yourself, so I like your name. I'm Ashara. Uh, I'm not new here. Some but... people are acting like, finally, I know her <laughs> name. I'm new to um, walking with God. Yes. So how do I know if um, I believe? Or mm -hmm. how do I know how, how, to, how do I work on believing? Okay, very good question. Well, first of all, I would say that you're already working on it because you're so committed. 
and you're so faithful. Seriously, you're so faithful and you're so committed. So the stage you're in is trying the spirit by the word. So as you are getting filled or filled with the Holy Spirit, you've got to try things that you feel unction. Ask him, Lord, show me scripture. Ask him because he will. Ask him, Lord, can I get a confirmation? And he knows why you're doing it. You're not doing it because you doubt him. You're doing it because I want to know your voice. And so that's how you start is just ask him sincerely. Father, you know, I believe this is you, so I need you to confirm this for me. I need you to give me scripture. And I promise you, as many witnesses in this house will tell you, the message will be preached that is exactly what. That's how he works. And that, that is what those faith boosters are, um, and it builds your confidence. And what I love about that is that it starts increasing that you're not alone. It really does. It starts increasing your boldness and your everything that you're really not alone. He's with you. So that was a great and honest question. That was a great question. Honest question. Anybody else? Anybody? Hey. Hey, Uncle Jay. I should be asking you a question. No. No, I got a, um, something I wanted to say. What yes. is When I think of integrity, yes. I think of being a person of your word. And I know many times we have a difficult time saying no. The Bible says, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Amen. But sometimes we, you know, have a hard time. We feel like we're disappointing somebody sure. or we feel like we don't want to say no to somebody. But sometimes being a person of your word yep. means just saying no. Yes. I don't want to do that. Or no, I'm not going to be there. Yep. No, I'm not coming. I mean, I know that might seem, but it's better than saying you're going to come and then you don't. That's, to me, a, a, a huge part of integrity yep. is being a person of your word. Yep. Let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. Yep. Amen. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and I'm glad he said that because, because saying yes or no is being honest. It's being honest. If I can't make it, it's being honest. I mean, you said it kind of, oh, just tell them no. Wow, it, it, that's the man in you. But maybe, you know, I would if I could. But anywho, um, but the bottom line is um, you, you, you don't want to make a vow that you don't keep because your word is your vow. And so everything lies on what you, because I don't know anything about you except what you say. And so if you, your word is your vow, if it is what it is, then I think, I think there's, let's back this up too. Let's, let's give a, let's give a, let's give a, a cush to it. And if you meant well and didn't, let somebody know. <laughs> yeah, so even if you, because you could have all intention and then something happens. So again, but that's in, honestly and that's integrity. It really is. Thank you. That was a man from experience. Yes. Um, who else? Who else? Uh, yes. Huh? Everyone. So I just wanted to speak real quick. So my testimony was that I was working two jobs, and I've literally just been constantly just going, 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 going to the point where I have not just been peaceful with God. So I've been coming here, and I'm like, okay, I can do this. I can have time with God, and then I can have time at home, and then I'm going to a chaotic job to where my mind was just racing, like, constantly. And then I was like, okay, God, I'm going to listen to you. And I literally had to quit the second job. I was like, but God, where's the money going to come from? You gave me this job. I'm so excited. I was able to tithe. I'm able to really give a 10%. Amen? Yeah. So I was like, I need this job so I can keep giving the 20. So um, literally, I was reading in the scripture because pastor's been telling me to research. So I've been researching because if I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to research what I've been talking about. So in Hebrews, it was just talking about praying for us. And in praying for us that we could, I want to read the right scripture, sorry. Praying for us, we are sure that we have a clear conscience and a desire to live honorable in every way. Mm -hmm. So I was like, God, I want to do honorable by you. Mm -hmm. And he was like, if you want to do honorable by me, why are you working two jobs knowing that I'm going to do what I need to do for you? You're working too hard. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but, but, but I'm liking the extra. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Good increase, right? Mm -hmm. No, he's like, but it's in your own. You're not doing it in my will. Mm -hmm. So allow me to work in you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, God. So I'm just going to just sit back and I'm going to just relax. Mm -hmm. And I've been so peaceful. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you guys, I'm becoming quieter. Mm -hmm. 
I think becoming quieter was the end of the testimony that she wanted. And I believe he will supply your need. And everybody's faith is challenged differently. Um, everybody's faith, everybody means is, tri is channeled differently. There's two stories in the Bible that we're going to begin to, to, to talk about because it, for me right now, it is a beautiful example of layering and understanding processes. One of those, and I'm just going to do it really quick, the, the two is the story of Jacob and the story of Joseph and the journey that they had to take in order to become prophecy and to be what God had declared over their lives. The beauty about Jacob is that Jacob was anointed that everything he touched really did prosper. And so for a quick review of the story, we know that he lived in Laban's house and that he was tricked and he had to stay there seven years to get to be able to marry Rachel. And the prosperity of Laban's house increased. And it increased because of the gift that was on Jacob. And this is some of the directions that we're going to move into is because, church, you have to know the gifts God have given you. And why I want to try to start layering this thing is because before we get so excited about gifts, we have to lay the foundation of how they're supposed to work. And so Laban labored for, se or excuse me, Jacob labored for seven years, and then he was tricked, and, and then Laban comes back and said, oh, my bad, because of whatever way he says, you got to labor another seven years. So 14 years. He labored in Laban's house, and the house was blessed. Well, then Jacob made up his mind, it's time for me to bounce because I recognize the gift is upon me. Part of the discipline that happened with Jacob, because if you remember the history of Jacob, is without sounding insulting, Jacob was a mama's boy, and Jacob was home. So Jacob didn't even know the extent of his gift because he was under the covering of his mother. So it wasn't until he got on his own and now he's working in another man's house. This is why, church, you want to labor somewhere because that's the discovery of your gift. And when you don't work anywhere, when you don't labor anywhere, whether it's natural or spiritual, you have to discover your gift. And you don't discover your gift by being unstable. And the word of God says that if you're faithful in another man's ministry, then when it is time for yours, then everything you need will be back because you've proven faithfulness. So working in ministry, working in the house of God, even on your job, church, it's a level of discipline. Being there on time, being able to take instructions, being able to follow instructions, that's part of your discipline. This was necessary for Jacob to build his own land. We have a lot of zeal. We have a lot of ambition. And trust me, God is ready to do what he wants to do with you, but he's not going to do it without taking you through stages. You have to grow in stages. I'm taking my time with this because I want us to at least get on the steps. Get on the steps. I don't want us to work aimlessly. I don't want us to work in the church like a whole bunch of Marthas and not understanding, no, I'm on my way to my greatness. I'm on my way to my gift, my anointing, my, and whatever that might be. So God took him through stages. Watch this, and I know I missed it in this story. You got to back it up for me. Then there became a time when, when Jacob was ready to go, and Laban was furious, and he didn't want to let him go because I know the gift is upon you. This job has not been right till you got here. Things work smoothly. If I, if I can just throw this out here, we know that I'm on the board of John Adams Academy. And, and, and let me just put this plug in here. And, and Tay works in John Adams Academy. It was a beautiful thing at the beginning of the year. And at the beginning of the year, um, you know, all the teachers are coming together. You know, everything was a chaos. And all everybody's coming together the first day. We're trying to talk about what we're going to do and get to school. And stuff was happening. And the new uh, dean of the school, he honored Tay so beautifully. And he said, I'm telling y'all right now, this thing is smooth because of Tay's administration. Amen. She can't stand this right now. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Ain't nothing you can do. Anywho, he gave it that compliment. And what was beautiful, like some people know, like um, in all due respect, some people connected just because it's like, you know, you black, she black. Anywho, but some people know she's <laughs> 
<laughs> Why y'all not laughing? Okay, never mind. Anyway, but some people know she actually belongs to the church. But some people just do a whole thing like, you know, Dave, do you know Miss Bennett? And then sometimes she's like, why do you ask me? <laughs> Anywho, um, it was such a proud moment for me because that's my daughter. And because I'm, I'm looking at the secular world honor her gift of administration, her gift of governance. Are y'all working with me? Now, the revelation is what is God going to do with that? Do you see what I'm saying? So all of us, you have to take pride of your natural job. You cannot treat your natural job like it's in the way. God, order your steps. You ask God for whatever your blessing is going to be. You've got to own that and perfect that because it's on my way to my next. This is not my destiny. It's just my course. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. That, that's where you got to understand. I'm going somewhere. God is a moving God. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I need you to understand, church, you have a living organ inside of you called the Holy Spirit. It's a living organ. It breathes. It moves. It needs progress. It needs accomplishment. It has a goal. I got to take you to glory. I got to perfect you. I got to purify you. Trust what I'm telling you. Obey me. I'm taking you somewhere. This is not the final. This is a small test. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God's going to deliver them out of all. Why you think it's just strange? Because I have to fire a test just to try you. It's working faith in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have a living organ. And it makes no mistakes. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. It makes no mistakes. And so we give ourselves over to it because it's taken me somewhere. So your natural job, so it was with Jacob. And Jacob labored. And he labored. And everything he touched, hallelujah, was prosperous for another man. And at the time it was ready for him to bounce. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. This is how confident I am in my gift. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'll give you, was it the black sheep? What did he tell me he was going to give him? Was it the black sheep? Right. He said, I'm going to give you, in other words, the sheep that's not really producing. I'll give you the, I'll, I'll take that. I'll give you the best of everything. Are we good? I'm going to give you the best. Just give me a little something, something right here. We good? Lay me like, all right. All right, you give me that. So, 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 so. He was left with this. Jacob, he said, I'm going to give you all of that. We good, Because I'm so confident in my gift. Can I keep working this church? Can I keep working this? When you know your gift, you're not intimidated by somebody stole my idea. Somebody, Because I can create it again because I just got it like that. I can do it again. I can build it again. I can work it again. I can establish it again because I'm confident in what God has given me. Long story short, he did that and God gave him the wisdom how to produce even out there till it start overflowing labor. But at that time, he's ready to bounce. What am I saying to you? I'm saying to you, you have to. God will prolong certain things because he needs the discipline to go along with the gift because of where he's taking you. He's not prospering you just for you, but he's making you sought in the earth. He's making you something great that many will benefit from. So these are stages. This is where we're going. We are absolutely 2020. I want us to be on fire with our gifts. Hallelujah. I want us to be on fire with our callings. I want us to be clear, but it's laid in a foundation of faith and integrity. Well, we know what happened. He takes his land and he takes his goods and Jacob goes on to his own land. And it was on that journey that God told him, you will no longer be Jacob, but your name will be called Israel. So your change comes in stages. Shout hallelujah. Your transformation comes in stages. No child of the king just bounces into greatness. It don't happen, church. It's in stages and every stage must be tried until it's a sure thing. So it's a sure thing you walk in honesty. It's a sure thing that my faith is in God. It's a sure thing and you go in stages. And then after a while, true story, true story. After a while, you're too far gone. You're too far gone for small things to get to you. And so let me just say that and I'm going to close it. You have to also know that as I climb, as you climb, yeah, as you climb, yep, yep. As you climb, there's demonic forces. On every level, on every level, 
And that's the condition. Every level. There's another level. Because why, why do I need to bother you when you only here? Ain't he, you ain't no threat. <laughs> you there. You still ain't even believe in God. Well, I sure ain't got to worry about you. You don't even believe God going to do it. You don't even believe God going to use you. Psh. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? But the bolder you get, hallelujah, and the more confident you get. When you start experiencing new tests, you ought to see that as a plus. Ding, I must have shifted in the Holy Ghost because I ain't never been tried in this before. Uh-oh, I need some graduates in the house. A few graduates. All right, I'm on my way. It says you're growing. We're going from faith to faith. And glory to glory, we are building. I'm, I'm wanting to lay this for sure because, church, we are on our way to perfection. It's not ours, it's God's. Give him some praise. Give your king some praise. We will be back here tomorrow night, and I want to pray and ask God to give me even clearer because I want to make it very clear and very plain. Um, tomorrow, church, I'm not sure if we're going to have, um, we, we may have to do Friday differently because we, we had our pop-up scheduled, and I, I just... Got to keep my word. Uh, and I got to keep my word because it's already scheduled. So we have to see how we're going to be able to do this. I don't know if we're just going to, you know, just do like a silent prayer. I don't know. Anywho, I'll let you know how we're going to officially do Friday night. Um, but we have the pop-up scheduled. So uh, I got to stay true to my word, true to the city that we've already committed to that. Um, but nevertheless, um, we'll see what we're going to do. So with that being said, let's prepare um, our hearts for giving and, and dismissing for tonight. Hallelujah. Let's build ourselves in a most holy faith. We're laying a foundation of growth. We're laying our foundation for where we're going. We're going some places in God that we will never be the same again. Not ever. Some of you by now, baby, you should feel your mind popping. Your, you should, your mind should feel like one of those bubbles, those popping bubbles that is going to another round. Like, ooh, ooh, I feel myself thinking differently. Some of you are like, Pastor, you do too much. Anywho, but your mind should All right, give me some music to make up for Brother Daniel. Just a little music, or Kristen, or whomever. Hallelujah. We're preparing ourselves for giving. Uh, you can either use, if you're using the, the TBM app, please make sure that you do Sacramento Tip Member. Otherwise, you can do your normal text by giving. We have multiple ways of you giving. Thank you for the saints that are still sowing into your $1,000. Thank you so much for keeping your word and keeping your integrity. We're on our way to a great goal. We're on our way to many great things. Um, again, God is opening a lot of doors. He's moving. I, 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 I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm being confident in him. And every door he's opening, I'm walking in it in Jesus' name. Every door, every door, every door he opens, I'm walking in it in Jesus' name. And I'm not walking in it by my faith, but I'm walking in it with prophecy. I'm taking prophecy with me every door. And I'm asking God, is this the, is this the one? Is this the one? Where's the one? Where's the one? Because the prophecy will come to pass. Hallelujah. When God speaks a word over your life, you don't know where that blessing is going to come from. Church, that's why you want to be careful how you treat everybody. You got to be, you don't know where your blessing is coming from. You don't know who God's going to use. You don't know who that door is. You don't know who knows who to connect you with what he's promised in your life. So you want to be mindful of everybody. Treat everybody right. Treat everybody right because you don't know who got your blessing, who's got your connection. If you need to come up with your offering, um, Brother Darren got you right here. You're coming with your offering at this time, whatever you have. If you're giving by text, we know that we're giving on the phone. Or... so much more still worth fighting for eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard all you have planned for me and nothing can separate me from your love when there's so much more still apostle you want to dismiss us eyes haven't seen ears haven't heard all you have planned for me and nothing can 
separate me from your love when there's so much more still worth fighting for? Come on, Apostle. Praise God for your brother, Apostle Dennis, the man of God. Amen. We're standing. Amen. It is something how pastors has these layers. And as we think about it, faith is, a, is essential because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And without integrity, you can't get to the next level. So remember that. As we are heads about, gracious God, our Father, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you, God, for how you call this time of fasting and prayer together. You said to call your people together, those who have made a covenant with you by sacrifice. And Father, as we've come together uh, going on these 14 days, we're coming to see your, seek your face, coming to allow you to purge us and to take us to another place in you. That this is not just some old routine uh, run-of-the-mill gathering or prayer time, but we're trying to get rebooted, to get recharged, to resurge, to go to this place that you, had, you have prepared for us. And so, Father, we pray that even as we're getting the downloads from your handmaiden, that we would take a more earnest heed to the things that we've heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Bring us back together tomorrow night, ready to see your face, seek your face the more and to hear more from you. Make us better so we can be better for you. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but not from your presence, cover us with your blood, keep us in your care, and bring us back together at that appointed time. These things we ask in Christ's name. Let every heart say amen. Brothers and sisters, love one another. God bless you.